Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial 0 of CutRight. This tutorial will show you how to set up a simulation project in CutRight and also some of the mouse and key controls that will help you interact with the UI. To set up a simulation, first load the machine. Once the machine is loaded, you can use the mouse scroll button to zoom in and out. To rotate, click and hold the left mouse button, then drag. To pan, click and hold the middle mouse button. With the machine loaded, it can be hard to see the work area. Hold Ctrl and scroll forward with the mouse scroll button to remove the door and the enclosure of the machine. Scroll backwards to bring the door and enclosure back. Now, let's continue setting up our simulation project. The next item we're going to load is device. When you load object into CutRight, CutRight will ask you the unit of the object. This is a unit which the object is made in. CutRight needs to know this in case the project unit and the object unit do not match. In this particular case, the device's unit is in inches while CutRight's project unit is in millimeters. By selecting inches when importing device, CutRight knows to do the proper unit conversion for the object when importing. Once the device is loaded, a prompt can come up telling you that the object is outside the safe work envelope. This means if you run the setup as is, the device can collide with the machine. A red box displays showing the safe work envelope. It is best to move the device within the safe work envelope. Now we will position the device, keeping in mind of the safe work envelope. We can move and rotate the device via input dialog boxes. We will rotate the device about Z first using the C rotation dialog box. We will then use the snap function to further align the device. Simply select the surface on the device then the surface on the machine that you want to snap together. Let's do that again. Finally, we will shift the device in the negative x direction using the delta x dialog box. The device is now positioned. Let's now bring in the workpiece. Again, select the unit that the workpiece is made in. In this case, the workpiece is made in millimeters, so select millimeter. With the workpiece loaded, we will position it using the snap function just like we did for the vise. The next step after positioning the workpiece is to set up our work offset. For the toolpath we are loading, we are using G54 as the work offset. So under the part 0 heading on the right workspace setup menu, make sure that G54 is selected. We will then use the corner function to position the G54 work offset. The corner function uses three planes to locate a corner. Once the work offset is positioned properly, it is time to load the toolpath. Cut right shows rapid move toolpath in red, linear move in blue, and circular moves in teal. If you see wide toolpaths, that means you have movements that violate the machine limits. When the toolpath is loaded, it is time to load the tool setup. Click on Low Tool Setup under the Tools tab on the right-hand menu. When the tool setup is successfully loaded, 
The Setup Tools box will turn light blue until another action is taken. If you don't have a tool set up already, simply use the Setup Tools drop down menu to start setting up your machine's tool slots. The last object that we're going to load into CutRight to complete the simulation setup is the reference geometry or the design geometry. This is geometry we want and the geometry that we will compare our machine geometry to. Now the setup is complete. Before we start machining, I'm just going to show you how you can hide and show the objects in the graphics area. There are four toggle buttons on the left hand side of the screen. Simply click on them to hide or to show the object the buttons are tied to. To start machining, hit the play button on the bottom left corner of the screen. You can now see CutRight machining the workpiece. As you watch the machining process, you will notice that CutRight defaults to workpiece view. For this view, the workpiece is held stationary while everything else moves around it. This isn't what happens in real life, but it makes it easier for the user to see what is happening with the workpiece. If you want to change it to how the machine actually moves in the real world, right click anywhere in the graphics area, then click on switch between workpiece focus and machine focus. This will change the view to machine focus. You can now see that the machine is moving as it would in real life. You can make this change anytime, even during machining. You don't have to pause it like we did just now. In fact, CutRight's graphics area is always accessible. You can pan, rotate, and zoom during machining. To decrease the speed of the machining animation, pull the slider bar in the bottom left corner of the screen to the left. To increase the speed, pull it to the right. There are also other simulation modes instead of just hitting the play button. There's manual line by line, simulate to the next tool change, or turbo mode. Turbo mode simply simulates the whole machining process without animation output. It still checks for all possible errors and collisions of all types in the current machining simulation setup. It just does it fast without animation. To wrap up this tutorial, we will do a complete model comparison between the machined workpiece and the reference geometry. Click on the compare button either on the top ribbon bar or under the analysis tab in the right menu. The result is shown as a deviation map on the machine model. The bottom of the screen shows what the colors mean in terms of deviation values. You can use the slider bar under the analysis tab to adjust the air cutoffs. That concludes this tutorial. I hope this tutorial has shown you how to set up a simulation project in CutRight and also some of the controls that will help you interact with CutRight's UI. We will add more tutorials down the line that outlines other parts of CutRight's functionalities. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to either contact us directly or leave a comment below. Thank you.